You got time for God? Thank you for planting the seeds of the gospel and saving more souls by sharing this video. If you die right now, will you go to heaven or hell? Imagine if, at this very moment, your life was to come to an end. Picture yourself standing before the Almighty God who poses a fundamental question. Why should I permit you? Why should I allow you into heaven? How would you respond? Would you rely on your belief that you are a good person? That your good deeds outweigh your bads? Or would you simply beg and request for His mercy to let you into heaven? If you are uncertain about your destination, this video is intended for you. And by the end, you will have an unwavering 100% certainty and confidence if heaven truly awaits you or not. According to the Bible, God created everything, the heavens, the earth, the birds in the sky, and the fish in the sea. He created you and me with the intention of fostering an intimate relationship loving relationship and bond so great so awesome we were created to have a relationship with god however sin separated us from god's love in essence it's us falling short of god's glory for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god and the penalty of sin the payment of sin is death it's separation from, from God. No matter what we did, the good deeds, we could not get to God on our own power. Have you ever lied? Taken something that is not yours? Experienced lust or desire for someone other than your spouse in your heart? Or used God's name in vain? These are all instances of falling short of God's ideal. Engaging in sinful behavior. We are all sinners. We are all broken. And that's what we see in the world. Brokenness and emptiness. Sin creates a divide between us and God. And unless you repent and embrace Jesus as your Lord and Savior during your time on earth as you are still breathing and alive, you are destined to eternal separation from God because the price of sin is death. There's a good news though. There's a solution. And that is Jesus. Jesus paid that penalty for your sin on the cross. He paid the price for all of your wrongdoings. Everything that you committed. The sins that you have committed. He washed white as snow with his blood. While you were still a sinner, Jesus died for you by laying his life down for you. There's no greater love than this, but one who laid his life down for another. And that's exactly what Jesus did, just plain sacrificial love, paying for your sin with his blood so that you may be counted as righteous and be redeemed and reconciled to an intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father. Jesus, he was crucified, enduring merciless beatings and the agony of a crown of thorns pressed on his head. He was flogged and whipped, bearing the wounds inflicted by a Roman soldier's whip. He was crucified and he died on the cross, which marked the payment for your sin. Following the crucifixion, Jesus, he was buried into a tomb for three days, lifeless, dead. But on the third day, he was resurrected by the power of God, showing his power over sin and death, defeating sin and death. He is victorious, and he did the hard part for us. We don't have to die for our own sins because Jesus did so for us. And eventually he ascended into the heavens, promising to return. And this is the essence of the gospel, the death and resurrection of God. This is the good news that Jesus, he sacrificed for us. And his sacrifice for us justified God's wrath. And all you need to do is to accept this gift freely offered to you, the gift of salvation. And to do so, you must simply confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you will be saved. 
Again, this is so important. By believing that Jesus paid for your sin, you can be certain of your place in heaven. The Bible proclaims that in present time, all those who call upon the name of Jesus will be saved. And if you are uncertain about your eternal destination, I encourage you to pray along with me. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died in my place. I am a sinner and I ask of this free gift that that you have offered us, the free gift of salvation. And I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. From this day forward, I will live for you, my life for you. And I ask that you will lead me, guide me, direct me all of the days of my life. And I turn away from the sins and my past. And I'm a new creation. The old has gone. I repent of my sin and turn towards you. Fill me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you prayed this prayer, you have taken the first step towards becoming a Christian. Congratulations! Please type down in the comment, I am saved! I am saved! The Bible tells us that there is rejoicing, the angels rejoice in the heavens when you accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. When someone accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and we rejoice with you. We want to rejoice that you have come to believe in Him. Now, this is just the beginning. You must believe and continue believing. While saying this prayer is a pivotal moment, living as a Christian encompasses more than that. To strengthen your faith, ensure your place in heaven, consider following the steps. Get baptized. And baptized is a proclamation of your faith in Jesus, showing and testifying that He is your Lord and Savior. Number two, join a local church that is Bible-centered, gospel-centered, that reads the Word of God and obeys His teachings, that encourages you to grow spiritually by going to the source, the Word of God. And now that you have believed, you must continue believing. By doing so, you will experience a transformation in your life and can rest assured have a heavenly place in heaven. Your heavenly destination. Congratulations once again and I look forward to seeing you in heaven one day. Follow, subscribe now for more because more is to come. God will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen.